Does anyone have a question? You know, I spoke earlier today about something which I think is really very important. I mean, the essence of this meditation practice is without the uplifting of people who practice it. You know, it's about connecting to a spiritual life. It's about developing one's humanity. It's about learning how to live in this world consciously. It's about learning patience and it's about learning compassion. And it's about really learning how to become, you know, fully a human being. So it's on two levels and both of them go together. The first is the spiritual. We need the energy. We need the spirit. We need the Shakti in order to nurture us so that we can develop our humanity. But our humanity has to comply. We have to be willing to do the work that enables us to receive that kind of Shakti, to receive that kind of energy, and to use that energy through the development of a chakra system that enables us to tap highest levels of what it means to be human. I mean, these are the steps to spiritual enlightenment. And they work together. I mean, there's no separation between, you know, the physical and the metaphysical, between the human and the divine. It's all one. And all our job is, is to learn how to use each one of these levels consciously so that we grow inside ourselves and we uplift our consciousness. You know, we free ourselves of depression, of unhappiness, of you know, insecurity, et cetera, et cetera. On this path, you know, that really takes us to a state of enlightenment. But if our humanity isn't developed, forget about it, because there's always going to be all that neurosis and anxiety running into fear, of fear, et cetera, et cetera. So this work is on many levels. And they all have to be done successfully in order for us to grow. Nothing is in, com in competition with anything else. You know, and everything that takes place in a human being's life is there for a singular purpose, to teach them about themselves and what they have to do to grow every day. It's rarely ever used that way. You know, people get depressed when things go wrong, they get unhappy, they, you know, they waste months and months of their life sinking into states of depression, which, you know, uh, and all the universe is telling them is you have to get stronger, you have to build an inner life that doesn't allow you to sink into states of depression and unhappiness. You know, I used the word, or I've been using it, and, you know, it's a biblical word. And as I always say, I'm not terribly religious. But, you know, it's a covenant. We have to make a covenant with God, with higher energy. It's an agreement. It's a contract we have to sign between ourselves that we are here to do the work and a connection with God to where we need, where we'll get the energy to do the work that we have to do. And, you know, the, the word work often has negative connotations. It doesn't mean one doesn't enjoy themselves, one doesn't laugh, have fun, do things that are amusing, and, you know, that life is a state of happiness, you know? It means that we take those moments that we are given to do in a work and we consciously do it. 
and allow it to touch every area of our lives. And part of it is getting rid of heaviness inside. That thing that says, I can't do it. It's too much. It's not too much. It wouldn't be given to you if it was too much. It's whether one is willing to do the work to make that commitment. Does anyone have a question? Somebody must have a question. Does anyone have a question? Stern, I have a question. Yes, Bob. I've been working with uh, compassion and uh, learning how to uh, call it up in what appears to be uncompassionate uh, situations. And and I, I'm realizing I have to be gentle how to... Uh, allow that the compassion to arise. Well, sometimes you don't have to be gentle, Bob. Sometimes you have to roar like a lion. I mean it. Depends on the situation and what it presents in your life. So don't pre have preconceptions about the way you're supposed to function. Because who knows? You know, stuff comes up that you really have to roll like a lion in order to, you know, take care of a situation. So I wouldn't think that, you know, well, first of all, you have to be gentle in dealing with everybody, you know. I would think that you have to be conscious. I, You know, I told this story before, but I remember we were when I was, you know, Rudy used to have this uh, Sufi guy, Pere Balayat Khan, come to the ashram on 10th Street and talk, you know, and uh, there was a whole crowd of people there. And in the back of the room of one particular lecture that Pere Balayat gave, there was a group of, you know, really strange young men who were creating a ruckus back there. They were angry. They were upset. They, it was a racial thing. It was, it was it was just kind of stupid. And after Per Valiat finished, uh, you know, we got up when we were leaving, and these young men were out in the hallway, and they were ready to get into a fight. I mean, it was really, I mean, it, I mean, it was really very strange. And one of Rudy's students started doing the double breathing exercise. <laughs> Schmuck, don't do the double breathe. Just be conscious of how to respond to this moment of what is going on. And it's true. Every moment presents us with a different opportunity to learn how to interact with it. Thank God nothing took place. Those people left. You know, nobody got hurt. There were no fights. So but it was very interesting when I heard Rudy say, stop it. Don't do the double breathing exercise. You know, you're going to get your head, you know, broken, you know. Just be aware of how to interact with these people. And uh, I, I've had in my own life, dealing in business, dealing in all kinds of things I've been through in my life. I had, I couldn't stand there and do the double breathing exercise while I was dealing with people in business. You know, I had to be totally aware of what was being presented to me. And it was a test of whether or not the meditation exercise made me strong enough inside to do all this other stuff. So I didn't wind up getting into my emotions, my pain, my fear, my insecurity. 
I was, you know, completely centered inside and having to deal with very, sometimes very tense situations. I mean, not situations where people are going to come to blows, but money's involved. Things can get very tense. And I'm sure you all know that. They get very, very tense. So it was the work in the meditation class that gave me the inner capacity to center in the midst of extremely difficult circumstances sometimes. So it's not a matter of being gentle or being a lion. It's a matter of being centered and building that center in your meditation and then taking it with you into all areas of life. And then you can have compassion for all the... In fact, you, you just listen to people. I remember once I got home, so I was studying with Rudy in the building where I was living, and the landlord started screaming at me about something I didn't do. And I remember I, uh, I said, Stuart, you could get really upset here. And I said, no, <laughs> you learned something in your meditation. And I just got centered. I just let him, he went on and on and on. It wasn't the landlord, it was the superintendent. He went on and on and on until he completely exhausted his energy. And then he looked at me and he started smiling and he said, ah, leave me alone. <laughs> I mean, I didn't say one word to him. I just listened to him. This and that, I forgot what it was about. It was something stupid. And then he got, ah, oh, just leave me alone. I don't want to be bothered with this anymore. Exhausted all the anger. And it was and angry at me, if I was angry at his wife or angry at uh, some uncle who did something to him and was trying to dump all that anger on me. So, you know, it's part of consciousness developing the ability to look at somebody and know what is going on, what is really going on, staying centered, not being drawn into the drama. The, the quickest to lose the battle is to be drawn into the drama. The best way to win in a situation is to listen. Let the person exhaust their anger and don't feed it. And, you know, and I, I can't believe that I'm the only person who goes through, has gone through this kind of stuff. I'm sure there isn't a person here who hasn't one way or another. And that's what the meditation class is for. Do you understand? To build that system and then take it with you into everything you do in life. I mean, you know, I've said it before. I'll say it again. One of the reasons I stayed in business for so long, you know, and, and this is really true. It was constantly presenting me with situations like that. And it was one of the places where I really learned how to stay centered. I had no choice. I mean, dealing with people that were extremely tense, had no training, had no spiritual knowledge. And the incredible thing about it is dealing with all these people that were dealing in spiritual art. Buddhas and Shivas, and it was unbelievable. And they had no idea what the art was all about, except they had some of them good taste in art, and it was all about money. That's what it was about. And that gets really tense. And the only way I could deal with them is I had to build that system in the meditation class that gave me the capacity to deal with them without allowing them drag me into their dramas. Thank you. You're welcome, Bob. It's just an investment in yourself. Let's say it's an investment in one's sanity. Because the world is such a... I mean, look what we live in today, this crazy place we live in. 
if you don't get centered and build that kind of an inner life, man, it'll suck you. You're going to be complaining about the politics and the money and the interest rates and the this and the that and all the crap that goes on in the world, you know? We're just building that in the class, building that balance inside, that power inside. It's like investing in, you know, probably I would say that one of the most important things human beings have to invest in themselves. Does anyone else have a question? Any like to I, mean, I used to love to go to India. You know, I used to go to India three and four times a year, and I would do pilgrimages there and go to shrines and try to meet gurus. And but I also had to run a business. And as soon as I had to run a business over there, I had to have my hands in all four pockets. <laughs> it was something. <laughs> it was an education, I tell you. It taught me how to get really centered doing business in India. You know, I, it was amazing. And it just taught me how important it was in my meditation practice to build the power inside, to not let all the Maya drain me. Does anyone else have a question? Okay, thank you. God bless you. Questions are great. They bring out wonderful things. Things I had no plans on talking about come out. So thank you. God bless you all. There will be meditation tomorrow evening. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. You're still on. You're still on. You're still on? Yeah, you look yeah. great, but you're on. Oh, okay. Got more of you. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, goodbye. goodbye. <laughs>